Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today's video is another in a series on specialty LEDs and model railroading. While these particular circuits and LEDs are not unique, they do have a wide application in projects and including uh, model railroading. So stay tuned and we're going to talk about the theory and how to design some of them as well as their applications in model railroading. Also, I have a board here that I'm giving away for free. It's a dimming circuit board that you may have seen in my book, Design Guide for Scenery and Lighting. So stay tuned and I'll tell you how to get this board. Let's get to it. So what is an opto isolator or opto coupler? Well, in its most basic form, it's two elements that consists of a light emitter and a light sensor. Why do we want to use one of these? Well, in a lot of cases, we want to isolate two different circuits. For example, we want to uh, isolate an AC circuit from a DC circuit, or we want to isolate two circuits that may have interactions if they're connected directly. Uh, another reason is that we can do detection of items if we have a discrete opto isolator like the one shown here when the light is interrupted. And that's particularly advantageous in model railroading. So this table talks about the different types of optocouplers or op opto isolators, and they're dependent upon the type of light source that's involved, as shown in this column, which can be anything from incandescent neon bulbs to infrared or visible LEDs or stacks of uh, infrared LEDs. And the light source, light sensor types can be anything from photoresistors, which are simply resistors that change their resistance based on the light, photodiodes, phototransistors, and SCRs and triacs. So there's a whole variety here, and the speed will be determined by the technology that's used. And this, this column shows the type of speeds that are available with the different type combinations of light sources and sensor types. We also uh, have the ability to look at the current transfer ratio. We're going to talk about that uh, in the next slide. We're also going to focus here primarily on the bipolar silicon phototransistor and a uh, infrared LED for, this, for the purposes of this discussion. So what is the current transfer ratio? Well, it's pretty simple. It's basically the output divided by the input, which means the output collector current you can get, or IC, divided by the forward current, the input forward current, times 100. So basically, you measure the current going through the, the LED, um, and you measure the current going through the transistor, in this case, a phototransistor. As the light falls on the transistor face, or the base of the transistor, the transistor will conduct to some degree, and there will be collector current. So the ratio between the two, times 100, is the percentage of amount of current that we talk about as the current transfer ratio. Here's a couple of pictures of uh, opto isolators. The top one is a very early version that uh, has a, basically a black box around an LED and a phototransistor. On the bottom, it was more consistent with what we have today in modern packaging. You could have an LED on top of a green detector, such as this uh, package here, or you could have an LED um, on the same plane as a um, phototransistor in this case. The optocoupler we're going to focus on today is the LTV847. It's a four-channel type integrated circuit. They also make a 827, two-channel, and a one-channel 817. There's four separate optocouplers in the 16-pin plastic dip package. The outputs are shown here, the phototransistors, the inputs are shown here. The cost of this chip is anywhere between 50, 50 cents and $1.35. And as far as the CTRs that we talked about, the current transfer ratios, you can get them with a little bit more specificity if you specify a particular 
suffix. Uh, the 847A has a different uh, set of CTRs as opposed to the 847H. The two charts we want to look at when designing a optocoupler circuit are these two. The first is input absolute maximum ratings. This is for the, the diode or the emitter. We're talking about here in the shaded areas forward current, reverse voltage, and power dissipation. The forward current can't exceed 50 milliamps. The reverse voltage, if you're uh, providing an AC voltage to it or, or reverse voltage, cannot exceed 6 volts. And the power dissipation for the input emitter or diode cannot exceed 70 milliamps. There's other thermal uh, considerations here and peak forward current, but we're not going to worry about those for now. The second chart is what typically the characteristics of the input diode or emitter would be. In this case, for the input diode, a typical uh, voltage drop is 1.2 volts. The maximum is 1.4 volts at a forward current through the diode of 20 mils. And the reverse current is 10 microamps, typically. Take a look at how we would design it. The first thing we would do is design the input circuit first. That is the LED in the package. And we, I reproduced here the maximum uh, amount of uh, forward current, reverse voltage, and power dissipation. So let's say we have a 12 volt power supply. We put a 1K resistor in there like this. Well, what does that mean? That means we're going to have about one, uh, the I is going to be 12 volts minus 1.3 volts. Uh, I got the 1.3 volts from here. It says typical is 1.2, maximum is 1.4, so I picked 1.3. So there'll be 12 volts because we have a 12 volt supply minus 1.3 volt voltage drop across the diode and that's divided by a 1,000 ohm resistor. And therefore, it will be about 10.7 milliamps flowing through that LED. Um, so that's how we get it. We, we indirectly do this uh, by measuring or calculating the current through the resistor. And that has to be the current through the diode. So once again, it's just 12 volts minus the drop across the diode, which is 1.3 which gives us, uh, uh, and divide that by, uh, actually 10.7 volts, and divide that by 1,000 ohms, and we get 10.7 milliamps. So we've, we've satisfied this requirement right here. We're well under the 50 milliamps forward current. We satisfy this one. We don't have any reverse voltage. We don't have any AC. It's all DC. Um, and the power dissipation, well, what's that? Well, we said there's 1.3 volts going across the diode um, times 10.7 milliamps going through it, and power is current times voltage, so that's 14 milliwatts for one channel. Now, this, this value here is 70 milliwatts for the entire package, so let's multiply it by 4, and we'll get 56 milliwatts. So we're still well under the 70 uh, milliwatts for the package. And as you can see here, we use the, as I mentioned, 1.3 volts is the drop. And the reverse current, there is no reverse current because we just have DC. OK, now we design the other half of the optocoupler, the output circuit. And again, I took the output maximum ratings chart and the electrical characteristics chart. And I highlighted the uh, items that we're going to be looking at that are most important. So let's get started with the output circuit of the phototransistor. First of all, we're going to use 12 volts again, which is well under the maximum rating of 35 volts, so we're OK there. The reverse voltage or emitter collector voltage has to be a maximum of 6 volts. Well, we don't have any reverse voltage, and we're not using AC. We're just using straight DC, so we're, st we're OK there. The collector current is simply the voltage over the resistance of this resistor. We're going to neglect the voltage, small voltage drop of uh, 1.1 to 0.2 volts here. So we're just going to uh, assume that uh, th this is a sh uh, short circuit, or zero ohms. 
So the current electric current will be 12 volts over 2,000 ohms or 6 milliamps. Well, the maximum is 50 milliamps. Now, the collector power dissipation is uh, simply the 0.2 volts across the transistor times 6 milliamps, which is 1.2 milliwatts. And that uh, times 4 in a package is 4.8 milliwatts. So we're all set there. And the total power dissipation is 56 from our calculations for the input before, plus the 4.8 we have here, which is a total of about 60.8 milliwatts. Well, the total power dissipation maximum is 200, so we're fine there. Also, uh, if we want to calculate the current transfer ratio, it's 6 milliamps over 10.7 milliamps times 100, or 56 percent. The transfer ratio is minimum 50 and a maximum of 600, so we're in good shape there as well. So this is an interesting chart in the data sheet. It displays how good a transistor, a phototransistor, in this case, is as a switch. Now, a perfect switch would have zero ohms resistance and would have zero volts across it when it's closed. But a transistor switch is a little bit different. And the phototransistor here shows that the VCE sat, or the voltage across the transistor uh, on this axis, and we want it to be obviously as low as possible. Um, but it shows this voltage versus the collector current on these curves and the forward current, the IF, for the LED that we have uh, in the package. So in our case, the forward current is 10.7 milliamps, as we talked about before. The collector current is 6 milliamps. Our uh, current transfer ratio is 6 over 10.7 times 100, or 56%, um, which isn't bad, um, but it's uh, uh, you know above the, uh, the minimum, as I mentioned before. And if we wanted to get a little bit higher current transfer ratio, we could, if we move this vertical line over to be on top of this vertical line, in other words, where the uh, collector current and the forward current for the LED is the same, then we would have about 6 over 6, or 100% current transfer ratio. But it would be at the expense of the voltage across the transistor, the VCE sat. It would be probably a half to 6 tenths of a volt. Um, right now, it's a lot lower, because we have, if we follow this curve down um, to 6 milliamps, and then follow it all the way over to where 10.7 is, we're probably under 2.2 percent, uh, sorry, 0.2 volts across the transistor. Now, the spec specification for the drop across the transistor is given as 0.1 to 0.2 volts. But notice that's at a forward voltage of 4, 20 milliamps and a collector current of only 1 milliamp. So if we follow this curve down, the 1 milliamp curve, and follow it to the right, I mean, it doesn't even go to 20 milliamps here. So they're pretty safe in saying that uh, if you went out to 20 milliamps, it would be well below 0.2 volts. And the current transfer here is only 5% because they're driving the LED so hard uh, and they're not taking much current out of the, um, out of the collector. So we're done. Uh, this is the circuit we came up with, pretty simple. When the 12 volt supply is on, uh, powering the emitter, the light emitting diode, we should have very close to zero volts, less than 0.2 volts. And when the 12 volt supply is off, our output should get pulled up to 12 volts. Okay, I wanted to mention first, before we get into model railroad applications, about the free dimmer board. The first individual who sends me a, an email with their address, name and address, who's in the lower 48 states uh, domestically, um, I will send them the free board. The address, the email address will be in the notes in the description underneath the video. So far as model railroad applications, we could use the LT847 how? Well, uh, one way is to use it as a block occupancy detector. 
And we could use a Hall effect device, of which there are some, to measure current through a wire. We could use a current sensing resistor. We could use a transformer, current sensing transformer, which is typically used but has a bunch of other components. All you would need is enough voltage to power the light emitting diode in the optocoupler, which is not a lot. Um, and you could use any one of these effects to, to do that, and probably a lot simpler. We could also use a discrete optocoupler to determine occupancy using this method. And this would actually even be a little bit better because the locomotive or the train uh, cars would not have to be powered. You would not have to necessarily detect any current. You could just, even if the power was off on the locomotive, you still detect if the locomotive or the set of freight cars were on the track. And we're going to show, a, I'm going to show a demonstration of that. This is the circuit uh, I came up with. It's very similar to the one I just showed you in the presentation. I have a uh, differences. I have an LED in series with the collector resistor. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. The phototransistor is a PT334, and I will leave the link in the description below. This is a infrared uh, emitter, LED, and the phototransistor is also infrared. About 970 nanometers is the specification. So you can see if you put the, this is a standard infrared LED, it's not a super bright one or anything, but if you put the uh, LED uh, up to maybe four or five inches away, the light lights, uh, you can also extend its range by putting a little lens in front of the phototransistor, and that makes it, uh, makes the orientation a little bit more critical, but uh, farther away. You can do this probably uh, 8 to 10 inches away, and it lights up pretty well. This also has the possibility of doing re reflections off of uh, cars and locomotives. So the light, the uh, infrared LED hits the, the box car, whatever it is, and it reflects back and hits the uh, phototransistor. So this is a transmission. Uh, demonstration, but obviously you can also do the the other one. And as the as the uh, car or LED goes, I mean the car or locomotive goes through the path, it cuts it off. I also found some laser diodes that are on uh, Amazon, and I'll put the link in there too. I don't recommend using these; they're very very bright, um, unless you're using them in a tunnel where. They're not visible to the person operating the layout, but uh, you can, I'm, I'm about uh, two, uh, maybe a foot and a half, two feet away with this, and you can see uh, it's got a lot of light. Now the interesting thing about this is that this isn't even infrared. This puts out so much light in the visible spectrum, around 650 nanometers, that it uh, just overpowers the phototransistor and it's strong enough to, to light the light. Um, the actual unit, you can see here, is about uh, it's about a half an inch long and about a quarter of an inch wide. So it's it's pretty small. And I got a bunch of these. I got, uh, just for some experiments, I got 10 of them for $3.50, so they're about 35 cents a piece. Again, I wouldn't recommend this. I would use the uh, LED that I just showed you or a super bright infrared LED. Uh, unless this is in a yard underneath the layout or in a tunnel where you're not going to see it. Um, so that's my that's the demonstration. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I appreciate it if you got some value out of this to please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.